Welcome to the Trichotillomania Hell Podcast. I'm your host Marnello, I suffered from trick myself, and with this podcast I want to give you help and information to overcome trichotillomania. All I want is that you can control your urges to pull and that you become the best version of yourself to reach your full potential. Today we're going to talk about what self-care with trichotillomania means and not means. And self-care with trichotillomania is extremely important. I'm going to be straight honest with you here. If you don't care for yourself well enough, and I'm going to explain to you what this means later, you won't be able to manage the condition of trichotillomania effectively. So this shows that you can't avoid engaging in self-care. When you don't care well enough for yourself, you may become overwhelmed and stressed, which in turn can trigger your hair pulling episodes. In other words, when you don't take care of yourself properly, it stimulates the underlying causes that triggered your trichotillomania in the first place. I first want to tell you what self-care not means. Because often we think that we're taking care of ourselves, when in fact we don't. Think about unhealthy behaviors like overeating, overspending or binge watching TV. It can bring you temporary relief, but it's not a form of self-care. It won't address the root of your hair pulling urges. And the worst of all, these behaviors only make it harder to manage trick in the long run and ultimately harm your physical, emotional and financial well-being. The second thing that self-care doesn't mean is ignoring your problems. When you have trick, ignoring your urges or trying to push through them can actually make them stronger. And ignoring the problem can lead to increased anxiety, stress and negative feelings, which can trigger hair pulling episodes. So ignoring your urges is not a good idea. The third thing that often goes wrong with self-care and trichotillomania is that self-care is not a regular part of the routine. So for example, you only treat yourself on special occasions. And does this make sense as trichotillomania is a chronic condition? It doesn't. Trick needs ongoing care and attention, not just occasional treats. The fourth thing that is not self-care is neglecting your physical health. Maybe you feel like you should prioritize your emotional or mental health over your physical health. But in order to stay healthy, it's important to balance them all. Think about all the worst results that can come from neglecting your physical health. No one wants to have obesity or heart disease. And this, of course, only leads to more stress and anxiety. The fifth one is that you should avoid copying other self-care routines. The way people experience trichotillomania is different for everyone. It's highly individualized. So the more important it is to find self-care practices that work for you personally. Don't just copy someone else's routine without considering your own needs and preferences, as this may not be effective in managing your trichotillomania. Now, what does self-care truly mean? It means that you care for yourself physically, emotionally and mentally. Physical self-care means that you take care of your body by doing things that sound or seem simple. And it's so true that what's easy to do is also easy not to do. How often do we fall for the trap of staying up too late? Or making unhealthy food choices? Or not taking the time for ourselves to truly relax? Embracing your physical health means changing these what seem to be simple things. But they are incredibly important. By getting enough sleep, and scientists recommend around 8 hours of sleep for adults, and at least 30 minutes a day of exercise, you can highly decrease stress levels and make it easier to resist hair pulling urges. Physical self-care also means staying clean and fresh. Brushing your teeth, for example, is very important for good brain health, as there are potential indirect connections between oral health and brain health. So, little side note, if you want to take care for your brain, care for your teeth. Also, go to the doctor when you need to. 
Your job is to make sure your body has everything it needs to be strong and healthy. Emotional self-care means that you take care of your feelings and emotions. Do you do enough things that make you feel happy? Do you manage things well that make you feel bad? You are like the gardener of your mind. You can't plant strawberry seeds and expect to grow an apple tree. You have to plant good thoughts and emotions and pull out the bad ones like weeds. Mental self-care means taking care of your brain and thoughts by doing things that keep your mind sharp and healthy. Just like you go to the gym to exercise your body, you can also take your brain to the gym. The more you train it, the better it will function. How can you take your brain to the gym? Learning new things is a great example, as new connections are being formed, which makes your brain healthy and sharp. And what's true about the body is that if you don't use your muscles, you will lose them. The same is for your brain. You can also do puzzles or practice mindfulness and meditation to help you stay calm and focused. If you need extra help, maybe you suffer from extreme anxiety, for example, you can also talk to a professional who can give you the tools to take care of your mental health. Trust me. Investing in your mental self-care is so worth it. If everything is healthy and right in your brain, your body follows. I also like to refer to self-care this way. Imagine you have a car. Let's call it the Trichotillomania Mobile. It's a pretty cool car, but it's got some issues. Sometimes the engine starts to sputter and the steering wheel gets a little wobbly. Now, if you don't take care of this car, and give it the regular maintenance it needs, then it will have even more problems. Maybe it will never run as well as it should or break down completely. The same is true for your body and mind, and so is trichotillomania. A healthy body and mind will bring you so many benefits to handle trick better. If you don't practice self-care and eat well, exercise, get enough sleep, take care of your mental health, and seek support when you need it, then your trichotillomania is going to be even harder to manage. It's like trying to drive a car with a lot of problems. There's no way it can go as smoothly as you would like to. So if you want to be able to manage your trichotillomania effectively, you need to take care of yourself. Just like you need to give your car regular tune-ups, you need to give your body and mind regular check-ins. And there's nothing wrong with spoiling yourself. It's also nice to give your car some sweet rims or a fancy sound system, right? Have some fun with your self-care routine and activities. Treat yourself to a bubble bath, a new book, try out a new hobby, practice learning meditation, which is proven to have huge benefits for anxiety, stress and overall well-being. Or learn other great healthy activities. Whatever it is, just make sure it's something that makes you feel good and helps you take care of yourself. So self-care works as a great stress management strategy. And when you have trichotillomania, you will need this the most. Because without this, your hair pulling urges can become too difficult to resist. And the result? Hair loss, negative feelings of shame, guilt and low self-worth. Besides your overall well-being, self-care also helps you to promote self-acceptance and self-compassion. With self-acceptance, you fully accept yourself as you are, including your flaws and imperfections. You acknowledge and embrace your strengths and weaknesses, and treat yourself with kindness and understanding. That's what self-acceptance is. Self-compassion means treating yourself with the same kindness concern and support you would offer to a good friend. Why would you not treat yourself the same way as someone you love? It makes no sense, right? So both self-compassion and acceptance are important aspects of self-care and help you promote overall well-being. You have to fill your own cup first. I like to say that it's not selfish, it's selfless. It's necessary for your physical, mental and emotional health. 
When you prioritize self-care, you're better able to take care of others as well and fulfill your own responsibilities in a healthy and sustainable way. And never forget, it will help you massively to overcome trichotillomania and live with your condition without being significantly impacted by it every single day. So that was it for today's episode. If you want to get more help and tips to overcome trichotillomania, then make sure to follow this podcast. If you are looking for a complete toolkit to finally stop pulling your hair, then you can sign up for my program to overcome trichotillomania. It will be live soon. Share this podcast with others in the community to help me create awareness and reach more people. I wish you much strength on your journey and I hope you have an amazing day.